Hey guys, Kurt Chan, Technical Advantage at Autodesk, and today I want to show you a quick introduction to turning with Infusion 360. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Uh, what you see here is I actually have a V-belt pulley actually set up in my chuck. And I want to give a shout out to Matt Nichols of Hagerman and Company who let me use one of his parts. Um, if you're not familiar with him or familiar with his blog, definitely check him out. What he has is a great blog that goes through a lot of tips and tricks in regards to working with uh, Autodesk CAM products, as well as we just did a webinar a couple days back on tips and tricks from going from two and a half to three axis and even talking about turning. So take a look at that on the upper right hand corner of the screen. Let's go ahead and dive right in. So step number one is you know doing all the setup. And what you can see here is I already have it set up in my, in my chuck. Now let's take a look at it a little bit more in detail. I just have the, the part in itself. But what you see here is that you gotta start thinking about some of the operations. And the first thing is you know doing your traditional setup, just like how we do on the milling side, and then going through and doing all the basic ones that we're familiar with. So doing a face op, then going through doing a profile, and then so forth and so forth. What I did is I always like to model my stock, and, and Matt did that as well too. And then two, we're gonna actually show you the reason why we love integrated cams. When you make a design change, everything will update. We have even parameters set up. So, you know, for this V belt, if you know the if there's more teeth, then you know we want those profiles to update too when we generate the tool pass. So let's go dive right in. So step number one is always going to be working with the setup. Same traditional ways we do with milling. Come up here to setup. Now instead of doing milling, as you can see for the operation type, I'm going to pick turning or mill turn. And from here now, it shows you it automatically turns the stock to a cylindrical size. Now don't just pick milling and then go choose a cylindrical size stock and think you can still have that, that same type of workflow. You can't. You really want to pick the turning operation here. Now with this said is all about orientating the work coordinate system. Still very similar to the milling side, but you, you have a little bit less flexibility because it's really just one direction really where the tool is coming from. So number one is I already have it set up in the, in the correct orientation, but for my, for my model, I can designate what I want. And instead of for stock, I'm gonna drop down, come here instead of fixed size cylinder, I'm gonna say from solid. And what I have already set up in my bodies, as you can see here is a, is a solid that's been modeled and I've already drilled through. So I can go through and do an in, inside grooving or, or boring uh, to remove that internal piece. Or if you want to do mill turn, you can actually come in and drill that in uh, as an operation if you have that functionality. But here I already have it set up. So I'm just going to select this as my stock, come back over here to setup, make sure everything looks great. This is how I want it. From here now, I'm going to just turn off my body and go ahead and say, okay, and there we go. So first thing is that, that first face operation, right? So step number one under turning, come down to turning face. And from here now, I'm going to go and just select the tool and I'll go and just grab a default uh, tool that I want to work with. You even have, you can see we have the operation, it's turning general, tool type, and from there I can even create my own custom inserts and so forth under the tool library. So everything is very, very similar to milling, and it automatically recognizes it. Say okay, and from here now I can just right click on the setup, come down here to simulate, and turn on the stock, and let's just take a look at it to make sure everything looks good. Perfect, right? So now the next step from here is we want to start working on some of these profiles right here. Coming right across and, and, and machine out that, that profile all along the side. So what I'm going to do is under turning, we're going to drop down and go down to turning profile. I'm going to use the same tool. Now from this area though, I'm going to turn off allow grooming because we're going to come in and use a, a grooming tool to, to actually get all these teeth taken care of. But what I want to do is under geometry, I'm going to turn on confinement and what I'm going to say is only look at from this face now to this back face as well. And you see why I'm doing this is that even when I do a, when I actually go in and make changes to this, it's only going to look between these parameters and you can see right here it just did a turning groove profile as, as what I chose. Now if I turned on grooving, it would actually go through and try to groove through with this tool, but it couldn't get all the way there. That's why I'm gonna come in with a grooving operation at the end of the day. So let's take a look at this and simulate it. I'll just right click on the setup, simulate again. All the same operations we're familiar with. I'm going to hit play and we can see first thing face it, then come in 
and do that turning profile. Beautiful thing, it color codes it just like how it is in milling to, to, to differentiate between each operation. And now I'm pretty much almost 60% of the way there. So from here now, the next step is now working in and doing each groove. So from here, come under turning, come down to turning groove. And I'm gonna go in and pick that that groove square or that tool that I wanna work with. And from here now, I'm gonna come back over here to geometry. First say okay, and come back over here to geometry, and now go ahead and I can do confinement and go from there. One cool tip is that if I, let me cancel this out, and if you're not familiar with derived operations, if I right click on that turning uh, profile, come down here to create a derived operation, turning, turn down the turning groove, what this does is that it hears all the same tools, all the same parameters I selected, any type of feeds and speeds, anything along that way, it applies it to now the the turning groove, and I don't have to really change anything. Only thing I have to really change is just say under select, let me go and just pick that correct tool, say okay, and go from here now, and it's gonna go ahead and apply that, that groove, right? Now if I want, what I can do is I can actually make some changes here, right? I can actually come through, right click on the groove, come over here to the geometry, and really just say all I want is to go from this edge maybe out to, to this edge, and now it's gonna stay within that confinement right there of, of that operation. Let's go in and right click and back and edit that again, and let's kinda of talk about some of the parameters we have here. You have the basic tools, you have the geometry that we're selecting, we even have the, the radius, the radii, or the, actually the heights of how we wanna adjust, the passes, Everything looks exactly how it was with even the milling operation. So the current five tabs, same thing we have here for turning. Go and say okay, good to go. Now, lastly, what do we wanna do? I can physically come in and say, you know what, I need to now cut off this backside, right? So we can actually come here under turning, do a turning part. I don't have to select any type of geometry. It's like the face operation automatically recognizes what's what's needed. And now I can go through, right click on the setup, come back, simulate, and let's take a look at this guy and take a look at how all this is gonna look. First face it, come in and do that, that, that you know, the profile. Going through, then I'm gonna do my then groove operation from here which is all gonna look just, just very, very similar. And I probably know I'm gonna have a collision with this tool, because I'm using the same tool to do the finishing off to kind of chop off the part, which is, which is not what I really need to do, but at least you know we can do this, right? Just like that. So you can see back, if we go back, I can even scrub right through. You can see any type of, any type of collisions that are going on. It gives me all that, that, that same profile. And then we can move on to this other one here. And you can see right here, it collides just because well, it's, it's not long enough, and I wanted to point this out for a purpose here. We can make those adjustments. Now, the thing here is I'm just gonna right click and say delete. We'll get rid of that. Now, the big, the big piece now is, well, I wanna now machine the back side of this, right? I gotta finish off and do this groove, right? Because it's probably being held right here, as well as do maybe a finishing on, uh, do, do a profile, a face as well as a groove as well. Now, the cool thing that we have is that if I right click on the setup, I can come on over to, look, before I do that, I'm missing something though, right? How about this internal groove area or, or, the, or the bore action here? So what I'm gonna do is do a turning profile. Now from here for the tooling under select, what we're gonna pick is go with the standard turning general, turning general tool one we initially did for the facing as well as for the profile. And now you can see the orientation, right, is not correct. I need to go from outside in up to this face. So step number one is, well one, I'm gonna go to geometry and say for confinement, only look from this face. It's gonna rotate around and pick up to this back face here. And for tool, well, it's not the right orientation. So I'm gonna change the orientation to 90 degrees, which is what I want. But instead of outside profile, I'm gonna do a inside profiling. Then from here, I'm gonna say okay, and there we have it. It's gonna go ahead and machine out the inside of this piece. So now I'm pretty much almost done. I would take it off and then rotate it around and finish this, this back piece. But here's a great trick. If I right click on the setup, come down here to copy, 
and let's come up to the operation, right click and say paste. I'm gonna make a copy of that operation. Now, the slick part is, I know I need to finish all this backside, right? Um, but two, I also need to machine out the center piece. Well, let's take a look. Um, before we actually go into to that detail, I wanted to talk about parameters really quick and, and what Matt actually added to this model. If I had to make a design change, what happens? So what we did is if I hop back over here to model, then turn on change parameters, what you'll see is I have a couple different expressions set up to where I have the, the V-belt pulley for the teeth as well as the user parameter of the length. So let's say if I went with a instance changing the amount of teeth to five and let's go with a, a longer length of five as well say okay you see everything updates but if I hop back over here to cam well what's gonna happen here is now I have to just regenerate all my toolpaths so right click say regenerate toolpaths everything is in an update I'm gonna see all the updated profiles if I go face profile there it is it extends and goes all the way includes that that extra tooth that I added as well as the grooving go right click so now what happened with the grooving right well it didn't update because it was based off selections right so what I should have initially done was if I edit coming over here to geometry I'm gonna deselect these confinements select this face as well as this back face and now that will update with the profiling. I did this on purpose so you can see the reason on the key avenues of what you need to select at the end of the day, right? Edges versus faces. As those faces extended, well now everything's an update. All I did was select on those edges, well the, the extra tooth came after that edge and that's why I did an update in profile. These are the things to think about as you're doing your selections. But you can see the value of integrated cam here. As you make an update, everything will propagate through to the cam side as well. Let's go ahead and finish this part off and take a look at that this back setup. So now what I can do with this back setup is if I right click on it, say edit, instead of redoing all these tool paths and so forth, I can just say under stock, actually setup, we have something called continue machining from previous setup. I'm gonna check that guy on right here, okay? Then now for the for the stock, we have that same thing selected. Now I can actually go through and say, well, what's gonna be my my uh, other area? Let's flip it around that way because now the tooling is gonna be coming this way to finish things up. Go in and say, okay. And let's go ahead and open these up. For the facing, I can just go through and generate toolpath. It's gonna now face that back piece, right? For the profile, right click, say generate toolpaths. It's going to take a look at only this area, but now the thing is for right click, edit all I have to really do is change my confinement say I just want to look up from from this face back now to this face say okay so I'm gonna do that profile come here to groove right click edit geometry it's gonna say from probably now this face up to this face there we go so I'm gonna just groove that guy right out and then for this profile I'm gonna now just say generate toolpaths and see what's going to happen here it's going to go right through and let's go in and edit those 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 confinements as well so geometry let's just say from this face up to this face and say okay and there it is machining all that internal piece so the value here is that it's going to remember the last setup it's going to remember all the operations as well as any feeds and speeds any adjustments and heights anything along that way and then now you can go through and do a two setup operation here so i got the first setup I'm gonna go through and machine all that then come in and now run this back side i'm gonna have a pause in my g code output my setup sheet so if i came here right click say setup sheet let's go ahead and take a look at that guy right on the desktop and there's my setup with all the fees and speeds as well as all the tooling and everything along that way so hopefully this helps you guys out uh, to get you started in in turning with fusion 360 very straightforward very easy take a look at that webinar we did a couple days back on some tips and tricks as well as take a look at matt nichols blog uh, as well as follow him on twitter uh, you can see his twitter handle below as well thanks again guys